Hey everyone, Mark from Coast of Country. Today's video, we are gonna um, put a drainage hole in our anchor well. Um, it's all sealed, so there's nowhere for the water to go if we get a wave over the front or just even the runoff off our anchor. So we've got some skin fittings here. Um, we're gonna drill a hole through, mount them, and have a hose running underneath the well out to the side of the boat. So that's one job. Another job is um, the place we got our stickers from uh, happily remade us some new stickers in the right color. We ordered some blue ones, they sent black for some reason. Anyway, all good, they sorted that out, no problems. We'll take the stickers off, change them over. And the other job I'm gonna to do today is um, mount some rod holders um, down the side of the boat. Um, and I've gotta modify these a bit as well because they, they're a bit big for where I need them. So we'll chop them up and do whatever we've gotta to do to make them work. So thanks for watching, let's make it happen. All right, first thing we need to do is mount this um, skin fitting as close as we can to the back of the boat here back of the well I should say, so most of the water is going to end up down this way. Generally it will slosh around to the corners but there's already a little pinhole there. Um, so we're going to try and incorporate that into the skin fitting so we can block that off. So it's not dripping into our boat. If you want to throw a coat or something underneath here, we're just trying to keep this dry. So anyway, that looks pretty centered to me. You could just measure it if you wanted to, but like I said, I just want to cover this little hole that's already there. So if it's a little bit off, it won't matter, but that's pretty close to center. So that's where it's got to be. Drop our pen down, which won't fit, that's handy. So anyway, we'll just guesstimate that there and there is about the center. I can look through there to see that it's gonna be okay. So that's where our hole's got to be. I've got a hole saw, it's pretty much the same diameter as um, where that thread's got to go. So we'll just drill this out now. Like that. We'll just get a vacuum and suck up as much of this as we can so we don't make too much of a mess. So that skin fitting will drop in there like that and then the water will drain in there through a hose out the side of the boat. Alright, so we've just got our skin fitting now. Take the nut off the back. That'll drop in there like that. We'll put a bit of, um, you guessed it, Zika Flex around underneath. Put the nut on underneath and then we can um, get that mounted. So we'll grab a bit of Zika Flex here. I reckon they should sponsor me. The amount of stuff I go through with this is incredible, but anyway. You can just use roof and gutter, good quality roof and gutter silicon if you were short for it, for, for this stuff. That's heaps. All right, so, without making a huge mess, try and drop that in there like that. Put our nut on from underneath. Do that up nice and firm, and you'll see the sicker flex easing out at the top. So that sealed that up. Now we'll work out where we need to put a hole out of the hole. We don't want it too low because we don't want water coming in when we're punching through waves and things. But either way, if a little bit did come up, it'll drain back away. All right, so there's our fitting from underneath. Um, I was originally going to put these 90 degrees um, fittings in there so the hose wouldn't be kinking as much. But by the time you actually put your hose on, um, I'll just show you this piece here. I've got this decent sort of conduit that flexes. By the time you actually put a kink in it, like without it without it um, jamming there, you haven't actually gained really anything at all by using these. And the other problem with these ones is the lip um, on the top is a lot thicker, so you need to fill it up with more water before it runs in there. Whereas these standard skin fittings are super thin at the top, so that's why we're sticking with those. So what we're gonna do now is work out basically our height of where we want this to go. 
I'm going to run it to the left hand side of the boat because the rod holder is going down the right and I don't want them to hit anywhere. So all we really need to do is work out where we just want it so it's lower than the top obviously. And we'll drill a hole and put our skin fitting in the hole somewhere. Probably be around there somewhere. And I'll run the hose more up to the front out of the road instead of out like this. So then if we're throwing a jacket or a coat or whatever in there for a bit of dry storage, when this isn't in the road. So I'll work out where that's got to go and I'll show you probably when it's done. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I was going to put a hull outlet at the front of the hull here and run this little hose straight out. But the problem is um, with myself even, or even a couple of people up the front of this boat, um, the tip of the nose to the water level is only about 300 mil. So what I didn't want to happen is when we're cruising along, um, I didn't want water flowing back up through the um, hose. Pretty unlikely, but up back up through the hose back and fill up this well. So anyway, what I've done is just drilled a hole through the little um, bulkhead or whatever you want to call it here and I'm just going having the hose drain straight through above our wet locker and then the end of it finishes down there near the battery and that'll just flow straight onto the floor and if we get any major water coming out of there it'll end up at the bilge pump anyway and we can pump that out so at least this way it's nice and simple and we don't have to worry about hull, uh, big holes in the hull and all that sort of stuff so uh, I thought I'd just keep it simple like that and up under here should be all nice and dry still uh, for any you know jumpers or jackets or whatever. All right, it's a bit of a pain having to do this again, but um, these haven't been on very long, so they come off quite easily. And uh, all that's happened is we ordered blue; they've sent black for some reason. Um, so anyway, they've sorted that out for us, no problems at all. These are coming off quite well actually. We put these on temporary to give it a quick run up the river. So I'll just um, I won't bore you with too much of that. I'll. Let's do a quick hyperlapse or something with that. We'll show you the end result. All right, so there's our um, new boat stickers uh, in blue. I think they look a little bit better. So anyway, we'll do the same the other side. Right, next job is to work on these rod holders. All I've really done is got a set of pretty cheap rod holders. I'm really only interested in this um, front section, which is gonna go like that. I've just purposely bought some wide enough that I can screw onto here. Um, obviously they're gonna be too long, so what I'll have to do is cut. I'm just gonna use four, so I'll cut down this center line here I might be able to use two of these as a spare, or even I might even trim this out so it looks a bit neater down this way somehow if I'm not going to use these as spares. And then, um, yeah, so this boat, like I said, is only going to be used for uh, guarding, whiting, sort of brim and things like that. So it's a fairly small sort of fish. So um, we're only using sort of light rods in this. So plan is that'll sort of go like that somehow. Might put some rubber liners in here, stop them banging around a bit. Um, so even this is like, if we get the mulloway down the river, or dewfish, whatever you want to call them, uh, this is probably one of the bigger type size rods we'll use. And even that's gonna be a bit of a squeeze. So that's kind of the idea. That'll just keep them, keep them out of the road a bit. So really all I've got to do is um, trim this up. The other option I could do is drill out the backs of these um, holders like go right through and I could actually then mount that on the end there as well somehow but I think for the sake of it it's just a fair bit of mucking around so I think I'll just stick with that first see how we get on. So here's our rod holder this is the top end part I only need four of these so I just took the screws out quickly and we'll see what's in there. Okay so how does that work? Oh that goes with that. Alrighty, so 
uh, yeah, they're just little segments, little spaces, hold them in place. So I'll use this end because it's got two screw holes, make it might make it a little bit st more stable. So we need one, two, three, four of these. So this, these two can come out. And then we've got to mount this somehow. So I still need that spacer here to go in to this part there so it, this doesn't fall out. So really we can cut it any, any side here at all where we want it. Um, so what I might do is cut that sort of like that. In fact, if I keep that screw hole there as well, that'll make it stronger again. So we'll cut it around there somewhere and the same on this piece. So that'll end up, you know, across, across here somewhere. And then it'll look similar to the other end. So really that's all we need to do. I just need to drill a hole through here for a mounting screw. Probably put that at the bottom so you can't see it as much. And we'll get that mounted. So that's it there. We've changed a little bit. I trimmed this up, a, uh, made it a bit more compact. Uh, I've drilled a hole through there for a big screw. Marked out where it's got to go. It's going to end up like that somewhere. So we'll drill and screw that. Fire up the um, vacuum cleaner while we're doing it so we don't make too much of a mess. Right, so we just quickly pre-tap these, ready to go. And that can now go on there. I'll have to get another screwdriver for that. I can't actually see what I'm doing there. All right, so that's all screwed down. Couple at the top, one underneath. Um, it's quite solid and rod tips will go in there. Right, so that's the rod holders. Uh, by no means perfect, but that'll hold four rods. Uh, generally, I only take a couple with me anyway. Um, and the other end where the butts of the rods are, I've got to get some um, bit of rubber around those bits of aluminium we cut out. I just don't have any rubber at the moment, so I'll do that another day. Right, to finish off these trail lights, all I need to do is put these galve caps on. And that's simple as um, pretty much that. Done. I'll do the same the other side and that'll stop the water running down. So this is the rod holder that came out of the boat. Uh, it was a bit knocked around so we've just tidied it up a little bit. Uh, had steel bolts through it so we've changed them to 316 stainless. And really all I'm going to do is mount that pretty much back in the hole where it was. Uh, that'll be still fairly streamlined along the side of the boat if we run along a wharf or something. Shouldn't really catch on too much. Plus it'll be handy if you're sitting at the front seat fishing as a bit of a spot to um, have a rod holder. So all we're going to do Basically just stick that in there, bolt it on, and that is it. Because this um, outboard doesn't come on and off, um, all I'm going to do is in the back here, uh, drill a hole right through the transom, put a, a couple of good stainless bolts through. Because if you have a look around this side, where the clamp is, where the actual motor sits on, a bit tricky to see, these um, clamps that hold the, hold the outboard on are just kind of just touching the... Um, transom at the top so I don't know if you get a better look at it there so there's not much room really where it's clamped on it held on quite okay for that test run the other day but I'm just going to bolt it on um, and you know two reasons stops people stealing it and also when you're doing really tight turns under full power if you need to it's um, there's no way it's going to come off so we'll do that Help if I chock the boat so it doesn't run off on me. So I've drilled our hole, just a matter of simply putting washer on the end, bolt through the hole, washer on the other end, and a lock nut. That's pretty much it. And I'll put a bit of Sikaflex around it as well, crank that down, 
and that's permanently on there and that won't fall off doing tight turns. So I've done the same on this side. So simple stainless steel bolt straight through, lock nut on that side and then we're not relying on the clamps because you can see how close to the top of the boat they are. This other piece of aluminium we put on here is pretty much just sitting there. So that way it um, hopefully won't fall off and ruin my day. And if someone wants to steal it, they're going to have to bring their own tools. So what I'd like to do is put some um, cleats on this boat. The other side's actually worse. This side's got a rail you can use to tie up to. I've got our um, temporary rope there where I went for a test run the other day, hooked to there. But, uh, I mean, it works perfect. Just looks a bit messy. Um, what I want to do is put a little cleat on here. I was going to put some um, aluminium ones on there and weld them on, but I forgot all about it at the time. So these will just get bolted through. This will be out of the road as well, and you can just quick, easily slip a rope on there. Especially on the other side, there's no rail, so I definitely need them over there. So um, just got quarter inch, uh, quarter inch bolts countersunk. They don't quite go into there. So we'll just have to quickly drill out this cleat. No major dramas there. What is going to be fun is trying to drill a hole underneath this rail. We may be able to sneak through there to do it. So that's just a matter of um, drilling a couple of um, holes into the gunnel, a couple of big washers underneath with some lock nuts, and that's pretty much that. So I won't bore you too much with that. We'll just get onto it, and I'll show you the finished bit. So there's our cleat. Um, basically, you just got to be careful there's no cables um, underneath here. I've actually got a light under there, which we we're lucky enough to miss. And if you have a look on the other side, uh, where I wanted to put the washers underneath, uh, these big flat washers were too big, so I've just trimmed off the side of one of them, so when they're up underneath the gunnel, they've got room to fit. So up under here, you see they've got a nice big washer, a couple of lock nuts, so they won't go anywhere. Right, so we've got our cleats all mounted. What I've also done is um, mounted this anchor point at the front. Uh, reinforced it underneath with a big chunk of stainless steel locked into the main frame. Um, and all this does is literally gives it a point of somewhere when I pull the anchor in. Um, I can use that as a hook on point with a rope as well. Um, but I'll, the main reason is so I can just quickly snap the anchor on, lock it. So when we're traveling, um, you know, if we hit something, the anchor doesn't go flying, and especially on the road, if you hit something, it doesn't go flying through the back of your car. All right, one of the last things to do for this video is to quickly. Uh, I've got a smart charger here. What I want to do is just change these clips over. Uh, how do they work? They should just slide off, I think. Yeah, so I want to just change these clips over and put an Anderson plug on here, which means I can then just plug that straight into the Anderson plug on the boat. Um, put the battery selector switch to one, which is technically where electric motor will go, but um, I'll unplug the electric motor and, and plug the charger in. Okay, so what I've done is I have put an Anderson plug on this smart charger. And now I can plug that up under here where the Anderson plug goes. So that can just snap into that one, like so. And then when I flick the oscillator switch to number one, that's where our trolling motor will go. And you can see that's, um, that'll start charging now. So when I get home from fishing that, I'll just plug it in um, the 240 volts. Um, what I want to do now is, um, in the next video, we're going to leave it there for this one, but in the next video I want to pull this outboard apart whilst uh, it's running and just see if I can tap off the charge wire off the coil and see if we can put a rectifier regulator in there so we can charge while we're travelling along. So thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Um, hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe also if you could, that'd be great. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.